hello and welcome to a special edition of Sexpresso. <laughs> so this time around we're having a little technical difficulties in the computer downstairs, so I'm joined with hashtag boys and other problems, Nick Lowe. He's also letting me use his computer. Great! Now that we've got that established, let's go to the question. Today's question is, what is intersex? How common is it? So intersex is a general term used for a variety of conditions in which a person is born with sex characteristics that don't seem to fit the typical definition of female and male. These variations in sex characteristics include chromosomes, a structure of DNA, protein, and RNA that carry genetic information in the form of genes, gonads, a testes or an ovary, or genitals, external organs of reproduction, sexy times, and other things. Such variation may involve genital ambiguity, in which outer genitals do not have a typical male or female appearance, and combinations of chromosomal genotype, which contains many genes, regulatory elements, and other nucleotide sequences, and sexual phenotype, the composite of an organism's observable characteristics or traits other than XY male and XX female. There's quite a bit of debate about what counts as intersex, and thus how common it is, in the scientific community. One of the most well-known researchers in this area is Anne Fausto Sterling. In her book, Sex and the Body, Gender Politics and the Construction of Sexuality, she says that human sexuality is best understood not as a binary, but as a continuum. She says, when male and female stand on the extreme ends of a biological continuum, there are many bodies that evidently mix together anatomical components conventionally attributed to both males and females. The implication of my argument for a sexual continuum are profound. If nature really offers us more than two sexes, then it follows that our current notions of masculinity and femininity are cultural conceits. Fausto Sterling says that 1.7% or 1 in 100 births, percent with some form of intersex. A different researcher, Leonard Sachs, in an article titled How Common is Intersex? A Response to Anne Fausto Sterling, says Fausto Sterling identifies five sexes. XX and female, XY and female, XX and male, XY and male, and individuals with mixed or ambiguous genitalia. All the examples in her book are based on those five sexes. Leonard Sachs says that her 1.7% statistic, however, is based on including conditions that he doesn't believe fit the definitions of intersex and in fact don't fit in with these five sexes. Her arguments that human sexuality is a continuum rests on her claim that intersex births are fairly common and defines intersex as any individual who deviates from the platonic ideal of physical dimorphism, obvious differences between male and female, at the chromosomal, genital, gonadal, or hormonal levels. He says that her definition is too broad and includes people who are undiagnosed because they present no symptoms, i.e. are indistinguishable from other males and females. Sachs defines intersex as conditions in which A, the phenotype or reproductive organ is not classifiable as either male or female, or B. Or B, chromosomal sex is inconsistent with phenotypic sex. With this definition, he would put the frequency of intersex as 0.008%, or one in every 100,000 births. On the other hand, there are more than just researchers who have a stake in defining intersex. Actual intersex people. The Survivors Project is a nonprofit organization dedicated to addressing the needs of intersex and trans survivors of domestic and sexual violence through caring actions, education, and expanding access to resources and opportunities for action. And they say, since the mid 20th century, doctors promoted early surgeries on infants with visibly intersex genitalia on the assumption that they would grow up confused about their identity and possibly end up queer otherwise. 
they believed that if they could surgically construct a pretty normal genitalia, everything would be fine. However, there's no medical data to support this bizarre and perverted, as in a bad way, theory. In 1993, with the formation of Intersex Society of North America, ISNA, some intersex people who have experienced intersex genital mutilation, IGM, in infancy and or childhood came forward with testimonies of their pains. Both the physical pain of repeated unsatisfactory surgeries and the emotional pain of having one's body and sexuality violated, in addition to all the isolation, secrecy, and shame they were forced to live with. People who have had IGM performed on them often experience post-traumatic responses similar to those resulting from child sexual abuse, because it is a form of child sexual abuse. ISNA and other intersex activists aim to end secrecy, shame, and unwanted genital surgery. So if you're interested in more about intersex, about how common it is, what specific conditions count as intersex to the intersex community and the scientific community, you should look up ISNA. also letting me use his computer, which is highly... And my roommate. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> and my roommate. Female. Male. Ah, how do you spell chromosomes? <laughs> O-S? Oh. O-M-E-S. Okay, cool. <laughs> Gonads. She says... Gonads. Oh shit, I had the marker in my hand that whole time. Just give me a sec. Mid Since the mid 20th century, doctors promoted early surgeries. How do I make it bigger? She says, How do I make it bigger? Gonads.